camera mic all set ready to go whenever you are i would like to introduce taro imai an independent producer from the osaka area so welcome taro hello um yeah thank you for inviting yeah sure no problem um I guess uh, we'll just start by uh, getting you to tell us a little bit about your background and how you got started in filmmaking. You know, I grew up in Kobe, right? mm -hmm. but not, not in the city side, kind of a mountain side of Kobe. And uh, when I graduated from high school, um, I decided to go to film school. But I think at that time, like we didn't, well, there were some film schools in Japan, but uh, at the same time, I also wanted to go to the States, so uh, I went to a film school in LA uh, right after high school. Then, um, yeah, I stayed in LA for seven years. Um, you know, I went to the school, but also I was working. And uh, um, then, but when I came back to Japan, like I couldn't really find a job in the film industry. So I, you know, I thought I should save up some money first. And um, so I started to work uh, at a car company first. And I worked for a car company for three years. And then the next seven years, I worked for a trading company. And uh, trading means uh, export and import and those things. Mm -hmm. And I was in charge of a cotton yarn for seven years. But um, after 10 years, like I realized like, you know, okay like you know it's it's enough you know i unfortunately i couldn't save up so much money like uh you know it's it's just so difficult to save money you know right. i was making more money than now but uh you know if you make more money you spend more you know <laughs> yeah of course so, um but anyway i quit the job like um like five years ago like i think it was like 2015 like right. six years ago right and then i made one feature film like uh with i i invested a little bit of money from my savings mm -hmm. uh that is the eric pretended right um, so you so uh you so you quit the job and went straight into producing or so you said you directed well um Actually, um, I wanted to be a director first. So mm -hmm. while I was working for those companies, like I was attending a, um, a screenwriting class in, a, mm -hmm. like, you know, in, in Osaka. screenwriting in Osaka. Yeah. Then uh, I was hoping like I can write something and you know maybe I can direct something, but um, that was so difficult. You know, like uh, there are so many people who want to be a a uh, screenwriter or director and uh, yeah, it's very but, competitive. but kind of you can't really find a producer i realized you know i i was not sure how to find the money or how to find a producer i couldn't find anyone who can help me you know i was mm -hmm. always alone like but right. then <clears throat> that that will go to the the next question but anyway um i you know i found like another guy in the in the class who wants to be a director and he hmm. showed me a script right and that was i i liked the script and which that was something we can just shoot immediately quickly with like almost no money so i kind of made a kind of no no budget film like you know it's it's really it's really cheap you know i didn't right. spend so much so that but, was your first uh <clears throat> film that you produced yeah yeah and and you and you and you paired up with that director from the screenwriting class yeah yeah so i, I was like hoping like maybe okay I, I will produce this time and next time you will produce my film that was a I deal see. but was after producing the film i realized okay the producing might be more interest more interesting you know mm -hmm. and i thought maybe producing is, is more for me more than directing and uh, at the same time i thought you know we I realized, you know, we need more producers in Japan. Uh, of course, you know, like, producing is always yeah. helpful. So, yeah, because trying to find a producer is so difficult, right? But if you, you know, if you become a producer and you you just go to talk to a director who wants to be a director, right? That's much easier, you know. Well, it's not easy after that, but it's I think it's still easier than like you know trying to be a director. 
So you're, I guess you're, what you're trying to say is it's easier to get the ball rolling. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Because if I'm, if I want to be a director, I have to do everything by myself, right? Yes. But when I find a director, we, we have at least two people working together for one project. It's just mm -hmm. totally different, you know, two people working for the project or one person working is, it's not uh, one plus one, it's two. It's like, you know, it's more than that, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So right now in Japan, I guess you're not really producing much with the pandemic and all. So how has the, I know, obviously like it's a, the pandemic's had a big effect on the Japanese film industry. So what's your take on it? Well, yeah, um, I'm not really representing the Japanese film industry. So I, well, you're an, I, well, you're yeah, an independent producer. Right, right, right. We're, but, we're all independent in this game. For Yeah, I, I think it's quite, you know, the all the, any any countries are suffering right now and the, the difference is in Japan like uh, the production is still going on even though uh, we have less productions going on the, I don't know if it's good or bad we don't really have the strict rule for about uh, you know the film shoot you know we can if you want we can shoot there's right. no no well we have like uh, industry guidelines Right. But which is not mandatory. We don't have to follow it because we don't really have the official industry organizations. You know, mm -hmm. there are organizations. They are to just like they, 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 yeah, they put the guidelines online. But uh, for the commercial industries, like the companies like uh, Toho, Toei, mm -hmm. Shochiku, and Kadokawa, they have a kind of organization. Right? But we are not. We don't belong to that organization, so we don't really have to follow that. And uh, also, there is, uh, I think, organizations for indie producers, but also we are not really, you know, we don't belong to those like organizations. So mm -hmm. it's not really mandatory. Like, we just have to. Well, but we still follow the guideline. I, I still follow the guideline as a producer, but other producers they don't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, right. but. But anyway, the the production is still going on, even though it's less. But what I see is, be, uh, is that uh, because of no blockbuster films being distributed these days, in the in the cinema, in the theaters, we see more Japanese indie films being distributed since last year. Well, that's a it's a good thing for independence. Maybe. Well, it's it's kind of a complicated it's good but uh you know that's it's really complicated these things <laughs> but maybe for you know if you're a director and if you want to sell your name you know uh -huh. it's good you know right right yeah right right but the effect on the whole industry is not good overall obviously i don't think it's good but uh maybe it's a bigger problem for the commercial film industry mm -hmm. you know they are because the the money involved and people involved it's much bigger you know for for in the industry it's you know we always it doesn't matter if it's a pandemic or not we don't make money right <laughs> we are struggling anyway so <laughs> and we we have some since last year we got some uh, government subsidies uh, you know which is quite good for small companies because it's strange the japanese government subsidy it's really same amount. we get same amount whether the company is big or small yeah, so that's my, interesting. My, my company is only only myself, so I get, you know, it is good for me. But, you know, the company who has like 10 employees, like they get the same amount and they, for them, it's nothing, you know. Yeah, back home in Canada, when it comes to subsidies, they really look at things carefully and they say like, you know, they really look at your situation and they yeah. say, and I'm sure that they, you know, adjust the amount yeah. depending on size. Yeah. So, so last year, my company got 2 million yen. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, because I usually, my, my company service is not even 2 million yen, you know. <laughs> well, so, you know, we got you, 2 million great. yen, that's great, yeah. yeah. Right, fantastic. Um, yeah. So, so getting back to the pro producing, what exactly, sometimes, you know, uh, the job of producer, like a lot of people, you know, sometimes it's very difficult to get an exact definition of what a producer does. So could you tell us like exactly what your duties are or what you do as a producer or the different variations? 
Yeah, I think there's so many um, definitions and we cannot really say what is the thing because it really depends on the project and uh, the size of the project and uh, depends on the country, you know. Uh, normally in Japan, we don't really have a independent producer like, like me, you know. Most of the producers, they belong to a bigger company. Mm -hmm. And uh, for each project, there are many producers normally because in Japan, like we, we have a production committee system, which like mm -hmm. company like Toho or maybe Fuji Television or Dentsu, or those companies, they, uh, you know, they put the money together and they work mm -hmm. together, right? And mm -hmm. uh, each company is, you know, the person in charge, they call them producers. So, but... You know, those producers, they are responsible for, you know, if you are coming from TV network, maybe they are more responsible for TV, you know, uh, showing that in TV. Or if you are working, coming from Toho, and they are more responsible for, uh, you know, theatrical distribution. If you're coming from production company, they're more. So they don't really, like, I don't think they really see overseas everything, you know. Right. Right. They, they don't know who is the most responsible. Uh, in right. my case, um, I do everything by myself, mm -hmm. um, which is, I think, more like European uh, produ producer style. Um, mm -hmm. So, the, what, what the, are some what are some of the things that you do? Well, like for me, like I would say, um, I would do I do everything like from uh, my my job is like you know from the scratch, you know, I. I don't work with my own project in my case, you know, it's my personal case. I work with, always work with someone else's idea, the director's idea normally. You know, if the director, you know, has some kind of idea, it doesn't have to be the script, it's just an idea, it's just sometimes synopsis, it's sometimes yes. treatment. Right. And from that point, my job is to make it to, you know, to make the film from this idea, to make it to the film and mm -hmm. then deliver it to the audience so that would include helping develop this the idea and the script or yeah. would it and it would it help like you know getting the can the equipment together uh location yeah, yeah. things like that yeah yeah so like i would say like you know the, the, we start from the idea and we end in either like theatrical distribution or even more than that you know or amazon at online distribution mm -hmm. you know it's so it's kind of many years of work i do mm -hmm. everything yeah so you're there from the beginning and right on past the end of you know past the end of uh post-production you're so you're you're way beyond that into like you said right into theatrical distribution or yeah. into um online sales or even um streaming platforms yeah right right yeah sometimes like um there's a project which is you know kind of ready to shoot and they ask me like you know if, especially for the co-productions i have a friend in the philippines like you know the and the filipino producer i, I know her very well and uh she she, she told me like, okay, we are shooting the film in japan so can I help me to shoot you know mm -hmm. but to get the subsidies and uh you know just do the it's more like a line producer's job which right. i don't do normally Mm -hmm. I don't really do that, but, you know, since she was a good friend of mine, I really respect for her, so, okay, and I really like the project, so, okay, let's do it. But it's a really mm -hmm. rare case. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so Tara, in general, what kind of projects attract you? So, if you meet a director and he or she has an idea, you know, what kind of a project do you think that you're attracted to? And then I guess we could get into what project do you think does well? In Japan. Well, my, my projects are always kind of strange projects. Um, <laughs> well, you know, you can think about that, you know, the director, if you're a director, you know, you don't, you don't show that project to me fast, you know, you, you go to bigger production companies fast, you know, you, you want to show it to you know, Toho, if it's, even if it's not Toho, but there are so many bigger production companies, right? Mm -hmm. But um if they don't select if they're not interested in those projects you know the director you know will come to me you know um i have this kind of project you know no one is like interested in this project <laughs> and but <clears throat> when when that happens um i still you know 
it's kind of like you know in the past five years like i discovered this like i first thought even if even for the low budget film it's it might be easier if it's like commercially appealing you know i thought it's better but right. all the project moving forward is the difficult ones more kind of art house oriented or more mm -hmm. how to say more niche you know more mm -hmm. exactly know, yeah more director oriented Right. I think I think you know, if you try to make kind of commercial film in low budget, it just you know becomes work. shit. You know, like it's because you know if it if it's, if it's good, you know maybe bigger company they will take it, right? Exactly. If they don't take it, that means it's the project is not good, and uh, and we try to make it with a low budget, you know, then it's not good, you know. So you have to realize, you know, it is what it is, right? And not you know, and not right. try to make it something that it's not. Right. So, yeah, like I, but it's, I don't know, like um, all my projects I have, you know, I, I have like six or like seven, maybe eight, seven, maybe like seven projects right now uh, oh, wow. in my mm -hmm. hands. Um, mostly like uh, the director was my friend, you mm -hmm. know, before they show me the script or whatever we kind of establish we become friends first you know we so you have some relationship and rapport yeah yeah then at some point they kind of uh you know, show me some kind of idea or something when when i feel like okay let's do it then it will start moving yeah mm -hmm. but yeah sometimes like you know some people they just send me the script or something uh most of the time i don't have time to read the script even though i'm not a big producer but you know i i'm, I'm not really a fast reader it takes hours for me to read you know if i read it quickly i i don't really understand so i kind of have to spend time to mm -hmm. read the script then uh most of the time i don't so you it's a believe it you know if you are talking to bigger producers you know i they are not gonna see it you know but even for me, like if for me, like, you know, small producer like me, I, I don't have time to read the script, right? But if he or she is a good friend of mine, I know what kind of person they are. Yes, she is, and it's I don't know if it's correct or not. Now I kind of I can kind of tell. Maybe it's not always correct, but if this person writes script, maybe it's good. You know, maybe mm -hmm. if this person writes script, maybe it's not good. <laughs> I, I yeah yeah because there's um so many directors like uh who are not really serious about you know making they some people they just want to be famous you know they just want to uh but i like someone who wants to make a film you know they they not about becoming famous you know mm -hmm. but i think I feel like sixty percent, seventy percent of the young director they they don't have the idea what kind of film they want to make. They just want to be a director. They just want mm -hmm. to be famous. Maybe I was like that too. That's why it didn't work for me. Maybe you know, it just takes it just takes yeah. time for people to yeah, I, grow up. I didn't know like what what kind of film I wanted to make. So, but yeah, those directors I work with like they are not you know they they don't do this. To be a director to become famous they want they do this because they want to make this kind of film right uh, so tara what what are the budgets you're working with on like you know you say low budget but what kind of budgets are we talking here and and, and is there like a i know we're talking low budgets but is there is there like a, a minimum do you think or like you know like this amount of money and i can make a decent film or or this money you know and i can make this yeah, like uh, the film I made, like uh, Erico pretended, which was like uh, fifty thousand USD, like maybe yes. 40, 40 to fifty thousand USD. I remember um, when you were making that film. Yeah, um, but most of my projects I'm working on right now is um, I have many, but I think all the projects we are targeting more than five hundred thousand USD. Oh. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we don't have 
maybe some project maybe we can go down to 300,000 mm -hmm. yeah but the bigger budget projects with uh, which I'm working with Italy right now it's 1.5 million euros so it's it's almost like one 1.8 million USD right yeah 1.8 million USD yeah and all these projects are to be shot and produced in Japan for co-productions like you know for the one with Italy we like we shoot in Italy and also in Japan mm -hmm. yeah right and how and how do these uh, how did how did you find these projects did they contacted you or just friends of friends just through networking well mostly like I I met the director in the festivals for example the this director from Italy I met him in a festival in Russia okay. uh, when Erico pretended was screened in in the festival in Russia like uh, there was this guy from from Italy like you know and uh what's this? it was kind of a the town where there was nothing in the town so like you know for one week we just stayed together with this Italian director and we were just like you know there's nothing nothing else to do you know there's really nothing in that town so like we were just talking and talking and then, you know then uh if you don't have you know and then just eventually we just we were just talking about the project mm -hmm. yeah so it came about yeah so yeah. i think yeah festivals is a great idea i mean it's a great way to yeah. network and obviously meet yeah. people obviously right now that's not going on because of the pandemic so much but um yeah i found like there's people are so energetic and friendly at festivals there's always a good energy and it's always a good place to network yeah so did you go to me? I, I know uh, Erico Pretender. I watched some film and I, I went to uh, one of the showings at uh, one of the festivals yeah. at a small theater here with right, you guys. Right. It was really cool. Um, did that film go uh, travel to many festivals? Well, uh, not too many. Like, uh, you know, if it, I think if it goes to a bigger festival first, then it will go to like something 100 festivals. But uh it didn't really go to a big festival it went to osaka asian film festival which you show mm -hmm. you saw and uh yeah. they went to a few festivals in japan and maybe some festivals in europe and the us so mm -hmm. maybe 10 or maybe 10 festivals or something like that right cool yeah. cool so what are some of the differences between uh, the Japanese and the European or American film industries and, and when it comes to producing must be um, yeah well Japanese industry is quite unique and I I learned a lot about uh, you know I, I started filmmaking in the US and also I went to the workshops in Europe a lot so I can know both industries but um, in Europe you know the, the basically the film production is like depends on subsidies you know Mm -hmm. the UK and the US it's more like Hollywood system so you know we don't it's more about the studio or you know in private investment uh, but the money is much bigger they're talking about what well, if it's 1 million it's like my like low budget if it's 10 million you know it's normal if it's mm -hmm. right but um comparing to Europe I think Europe is of course still smaller than Hollywood but uh the budget they are talking about is still bigger mm -hmm. uh, because they have really good subsidy system. Right. And, but in Japan, um, the budget we are, most of the indie filmmakers they're talking about is less than 100,000 USD. Like mm -hmm. many people making the film in 20,000 wow. USD, right? And that's, I think that's a problem. Well, some people, European people say, wow, in Japan, like, you know, there are so many passionate people who make, who work for free for the film. And uh, <laughs> there's so many young, because we have like 600, like Japanese films produced in uh, 2019 to released in the theater, six, more than 600, nearly 700, which right. is more than the US, you know, mm -hmm. American films being released in the theater is like 600 something. But in Japan, right. like it's nearly 700 films, wow. even though the uh, box office is like much, much smaller than the US because the American film, they release worldwide, right? But in Japan, like it's only in Japan. And uh, we have only like 3,000 screens in the US. They have like 40,000 screens, right? Big difference. And yeah, big difference. But we still have too many films with uh, 
that means like the budget is is quite low and uh mostly like the director is just self-financing yes yeah and i think the problem is the japanese art house theater they they say they are supporting the, those young directors but they show it in the theater now mm -hmm. maybe 10 years ago those films were never shown in the theaters but now uh art house cinemas are showing those quite no budget films in the theaters mm -hmm. also the distributors they are picking up those those films right? right it's might be a good opportunity for young directors but i think many there are many problems in there because it's most of the time it's not the it, they're not doing it for passion it's more like a slavery you know like a <laughs> harassment you know really? most of the time yeah i think so yeah <clears throat> uh-huh so it's, they're not really building upon anything they're just taking advantage I think so, yeah. But uh, yeah, that people people tell that the European people that in Japan, like you know, those filmmakers, they are making the money in the TV commercials, you know, or mm -hmm. commercial films, right? And in uh, the weekend, they they work for a passion project for free, mm -hmm. you know. And but that's what they say. It sounds kind of beautiful, but uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> The reality is uh, there it is different i i don't think it's well if it's really if it, if it's like student project i think it's okay mm -hmm. or if it's hobby it's okay you know mm -hmm. well if they just really want to show send it to film festival i think it's okay but the problem is those are being released in the theaters you know that means it's it's business right once yes. you know the audience the, the, they are paying for the tickets you know and that's illegal, you know. If they you, should be, they should yeah. get, a, you know, they should get a share of the profits, obviously, right? For their well, work. Yeah, the the people working there, they're not getting paid, so you know, it's yeah. If, if it's a business, it's it's illegal, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so Tara, what about like, um, like they, you know, they always say like maybe Europeans or maybe, you know, I'm Canadian myself. We always look back, we always look at Japan, Japanese ideas. Is, was there a big difference between the type of ideas that you see coming out of Japan versus uh, American or European <clears throat> concepts? Um, from the, the directors or yeah, or from the directors or, or yeah. yeah. I, I think like in Europe, like, you know, it's, it's the bad side of the subsidy, you know, like, you know, if you want to make a film, you have to get the government stamp, you know? Yes. Well, of course, the people selecting, they're not from the government. They, the government is just, for example, in France, the government is just giving the money and the selection committees, they are not government people, you know, they are filmmakers or, you know, those uh, in the industry people, right? But anyway, like they have to, it's not censorship, but they have to go through those selection process. And I see the most of the films coming from Europe is more kind of social, you know, like indie film. I'm talking about art house or indie, independent films. More, it's sometimes LGBT issue, more social issues, you know. Right. Uh, or it's, it's really, sometimes it's really art house. But <clears throat> in order to get those process, you, have, you really have to have a good script Mm -hmm. You know, like if you sometimes some 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 directors like Wong Kar Wai, you know, he doesn't write script, right? Right. But in it seems like I think in Europe, if you're a new director, you have to have a kind of good script. And when when they talk about the script, they really um, follow American way of standard, you know, which is I think it's good. But <clears throat> I don't really see something crazy, you know coming from Europe these days. <laughs> right, right. Because I think because of that system, you know, if you want to like make a system. film, you know, you cannot make a film illegally, like in Japan, Europe, it's more strict and, you know, mm -hmm. right? the budget is bigger, but no one is making like, you know, crazy like Japan. Or in any, <laughs> in Asia, basically, it's a mess, you know, not only in Japan, like uh, Philippines or, you know, uh -huh. uh, Thai well, Thailand is different, but in Philippines. How, how about you know, Singapore? Or think places like that. Well, Singapore is quite a 
no, you know, there's not so many filmmakers. I know, I know many filmmakers from there, but uh, you know, not so many populations. So they, they have, but they have the government support. I see. Know. Yeah. So what you're saying is, so in Europe, like everything gets watered down by the government, the, the government involvement and the selection committees. You really, there's a lot of the ideas or, you know, they take the edge off the I, ideas. I, I, yeah? I, I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, if you, once you become a big director, maybe you can do whatever you want. Yes. Europe, right. But maybe the, for the first time director, like it's really difficult to do something, something crazy, you know? So, and how about in like in Japan, like what kind of ideas are you seeing here? Like in... Well, um, it's... Well, there is, you know, the, of course, each director has different ideas, but um, if you go to those the theaters and look at those indie films, there are many films which features, you know, those Japanese idols, you know, yes. idol girls. Mm -hmm. Because which is quite easy to get money, even even though the budget is twenty thousand, you know, if you do a crowdfunding with the, mm -hmm. the if the main cast is idol singer or whatever, like you know, you get twenty thousand easily, right? And if right. you release the film, you know, even though those idol singers are not famous, still people will come. Right. So there are so many films like that, mm -hmm. but interesting. Yeah, I think those are the films being made. Right, mm -hmm. but other types of like films, like it's well, if it's commercial films, right? The most of the Japanese commercial films based on cartoon or yeah, novel or books, right? We don't you exactly. don't really see the original works, but I only work with original mm -hmm. ideas and. Uh, you're not seeing well, things like um, Parasite, for example, like an original script like that, like in K Korea, I think has a pretty good film industry. Yeah. Well. Yeah. In, in, because in Korea, basically the, the director must be able to write the original script, you know, mm -hmm. that's the, the different in Japan. Like, you know, we, even in the screenwriting class, I went, they said, you know, you don't have to write the original script. You know, they're not, they don't teach us how to write the original script because they said there's no job. You know, it's meaningless to learn how to write original script. That's what I learned in the... So you have to be... <laughs> the producer, they will give you the story. You just have to, you know, you have to know how to, you know, write a good dialogue, so, you know, those, those things. But... Um, yeah, I think many... Well, like, I think because of the budget is quite low, Mm -hmm. It's twenty thousand or something. They they when they try to make a twenty thousand, it's the ideas be, become very limited. You know, it's we don't. I don't really see something very too social. Well, right. some people try to make it something social, but more about something with their friends or their family, or you know, if right. it's a drama, you know. And do you uh, see any genre films like horror films or? Any things like that? Yeah, there are horror films, and um, but maybe not like uh, you know, not like ten years ago. But like these days, like I guess not so many young directors are trying to make horror films. I I sometimes read the the script, mm -hmm. but even the horror films, I think um, I don't. I don't know. I don't see for, for, for the script I read, I didn't really see something new, you know, something just, you know, something I have seen before most of the time. Yeah. Right. Many, many like directors, they like Kiyoshi Kurosawa. So they, you know, they write something like Kiyoshi Kurosawa style script, but if it's too, too same, you know, like, I don't, mm -hmm. you know, why, you know, I don't, it's not for me, you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Sometimes right. it's just like copying and then uh, I don't know, you know. So, so Tara, what, what would you say is, is the best way to get funded uh, in Japan? Like, what, like if, 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 you, if, if it was up to you, what, mm -hmm. what, 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 like what path would okay. you recommend a director these days to take to get funding? Like, can you take us through the steps and what is your best advice? 
Um, now, like we have a development fund, which is uh, wonderful. Like it's called JLOT. Um, it's it's from the organization called uh, VIPO. It's called Visual Industry Promotion Organization (VIPO), okay. and they mm -hmm. have the development fund called JLOT, okay. J L O D, and mm -hmm. they will give us half of the money we spend for development. So, if I pay you like. Uh, let's say ten thousand dollars for writing the script they will give me five thousand mm -hmm. dollars so until then like you know basically indie filmmakers i don't think anyone really got paid for writing the script you know the basically mm -hmm. you know the director writes the script for free so you're saying if if you were my producer you would pay me as a director to write the script i do yeah, yeah. i see yeah i do i i, try, I always well, unless there's already a script you know sometimes you know you already have a script but i think even if you already have a script i think and i should pay you know right. but what i hear from other directors they say well usually they don't get paid even from the bigger companies you know because it's the director's passion project they don't get paid for writing the script and they don't really question or they don't complain you know hmm. maybe for the directing maybe they get paid up little right, right but, for the um, actual being yeah. on set yeah so anyway like i try to pay but since it's you know i only get 50 percent you know i don't and i don't have money right so uh i had to find another 50 percent from you know from somewhere else or maybe crowdfunding or something yeah yeah so i don't really work on all the projects you know i can only work with something i i really like you know i cannot to work with all the project but anyway that's really is the subsidy that the development fund is really helping mm -hmm. so for these days for all my project i get those development fund to to write a script mm -hmm. and then um after writing the script we can also get we have a government subsidy for if, if it's a japanese film like uh, if the budget is uh I, like about one point mm, million, like 15 million yen you know mm -hmm. 15, 15 million so about uh about almost like 000. 100 about like uh, yeah. 130 000 us right, dollars right but well, let's say 150 right okay so if the budget is over 150 thousand usd mm -hmm. we get 20 percent of the the budget you mm -hmm. know so 20 well remaining 80 percent we have to find but the, the right. budget is over 150,000, we get 20%. So you get 30,000? Uh, uh, no, no, sorry, sorry. We get 50,000. It's fixed amount, yeah. If the budget is over 150,000 USD, we get 50,000 USD. So you get a third, yeah. Yeah. And if the budget is over 500,000, mm -hmm. uh, we get uh, 100,000. So this comes from the development fund? No, it's it's for it's for the production fund. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, the production fund from the uh, the agency for cultural affairs, the okay. government, the agency for cultural affairs. Mm -hmm. We have the Japanese Film Production Fund. Mm -hmm. So if the budget is over hundred fifty thousand, we get fifty thousand. If the budget is over five hundred thousand, we get hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. If the budget is over one million, we get two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for the Japanese the film. And for international co-productions, the budget must be over 1 million USD. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get 20% of the budget. So is it difficult to, you said is this comes the money comes from the cultural affairs. Is this difficult to get approved? And, and how, do, how, how what's the approval procedure? They, 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 look, they look at the script, the ideas, and, and the people on the team, and they check your background and your Well, your I think the... The first of all, like they only give us twenty percent, right? So mm -hmm. we kind of have to prove that we we can get remaining eighty percent. And uh, once we get uh, approved, we have to complete the film within one year. Yes. So by the time the application, we they don't really ask us to show us any contract or anything, but uh, you know we we have to be ready to shoot. So they will kind of maybe check uh, if I can really deliver the film, mm -hmm. you know, um, and also then the script, what they say, they check 
they care the script they read the script i think the selection committee they uh they read the script and also the maybe the the director's previous films you know yeah and it's well of course it's not easy because they for they only select a few direct a few projects for uh, for each category you know they are not going to select 100 projects maybe maybe uh in total maybe 10 or i don't know maybe 20 i for i think mm -hmm. yeah in but for the category like uh, the budget 150,000 they select only one or two projects right so as it goes up it just gets less if the as budget, as the budget goes bigger, up. maybe uh, i think the budget between 500,000 to 1 million has more projects oh okay you know we just don't have so much project with the budget over 1 million you know and is this are these projects just for osaka or is this all of for japan? The, it's a national yeah it's all, all over japan and that's that's difficult to get but once i got approved but well, i couldn't complete the film within one year so i had to kind of withdraw but uh once i got approved so it's because it's it's difficult but i had not so many people also applying mm -hmm. yeah because maybe for the indie producers if you say the minimum budget 150,000 wow it's too big you know if you're making a film is 20,000 right <laughs> why why do you spend you know 150,000 and uh still you still have to find 100,000 you know yeah that's tough yeah so it's so the other result you know the companies who are getting those funds are actually the big company you can see the result you see sometimes like shochiku kadoka why are you guys getting those you know <laughs> yeah those are big businesses <laughs> yeah but if you for it's it's just so difficult for the small companies to to get yeah so small company difficult must be almost yeah pr uh pretty challenging for an independent yeah person. so other than the, those subsidies what you know in the past five years i you know i paid to so many you know the bigger production companies okay. hoping they're gonna finance it but actually like almost i got almost nothing you know i i worked so hard you know i went to like tokyo like every month and i visited so many companies mm -hmm. they're nice they listen to me you know we, we can mm -hmm. we become friends but the most of the time, oh, sorry, I couldn't get my boss's stamp, you know, you know, it's not commercial enough or it's uh, most, most of the time, you know, they, they're looking, most of the company, they're looking for something based on something, you know, IP, Already, right? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, because they, they don't want to take a chance on right. original. Right. Yeah. But still, yes, yeah, they're, they're a good company. It's not all the companies are that bad, but uh, it's, it's just, I think you, if you visit, if you really visit, maybe like hundred companies, maybe one company might give you money, but it's just so many to work, right? But so, then mm -hmm. at the same time, I did crowdfunding, mm -hmm. and I think crowdfunding is much, much better because you get something. If you work hard, you get something. If you try to find some money from those production company, you work really, really hard, and sometimes you get nothing. You know? Right. So crowdfunding, at least you, if you put your energy there, you can yeah. have some result. Yeah, you get results. So I think if I have time to, you know, to visit all those companies, I think I, it, I think it's much better to spend all those time for crowdfunding. So you're saying, so, so basically what, I, what you're saying is maybe go for the development funds plus crowdfunding. Yeah. And if possible, go for those production uh, you know, subsidy from the government, mm -hmm. you know. And maybe a smaller project, because it sounds like 150 yeah. sounds pretty difficult yeah. to get yeah. on crowdfunding. Like, yeah, for smaller project, yeah, you, have to, you should go to uh, crowdfunding, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right. So how important is the relationship between the producer and the director? So I guess <laughs> for you, that's everything. Yeah, that's, that's the most important thing, I think. You know, it's... I think it's all about that, you know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, for, for me, like all, all my project, like it's, it's not much about if this film becomes, it's, you know, if I can complete this film, if I can make money with this film, like, because we don't know it, you know, if we, of course, 
we want to make money and if we have investors we have to make money but you know that's not i don't think that's something we can control we can if you right. make a profit or something but uh all all the projects it didn't go well in the past it's because of the relationship all the project going very well it's it's because of the relationship so not I think because of the money so much or time but because of the money and time the relationship can become bad you know that's true that's true but uh but the relationship is it's it's really really important so that's why i cannot really if someone just send me the script you know i if i don't know this guy you know i cannot really imagine that you know maybe the script really good you know if but i cannot really imagine that just reading the script from no one mm -hmm. the make the film you know right from a stranger uh, yeah I, I i don't know so at least i work with someone i i'm comfortable with and also the director must be comfortable with me you know? exactly yeah. true 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 so how do you and direct how do you and a director go about getting on the same page or or like you said it's just natural relationship from the beginning or or you like <clears throat> like you guys like have the same hobbies you like the same movies well you know, i'm not i'm not really good at that um i i still don't know like how to get on the same page like i'm i'm really bad but i'm <laughs> you know it just i try just I, I always i try to be myself i try not to you know sell myself too much you know um well in the beginning maybe you know when i went to the festival i was kind of you know i you know i would try to sell myself but uh you know it didn't go well just you know i just you know now these days i just talk everything very honestly to you know i then some and i try not to push my ideas or anything mm -hmm. you know i try to listen to, i try to understand what the director is thinking it's not yes. easy you know uh, even though we speak the same language uh, but it just sometimes it's it's not easy to understand what uh, the director is thinking and uh yeah but i'm so, always trying yeah yeah so do you yeah it must be tough like sometimes you can maybe you have a intuition that the director is kind of going really off track and but at the same time you kind of have to sit back and respect his or her ideas it must be so tough like how do you what do you do in that situation yeah um if i like try to move this project to certain direction for for me like if i think okay this direction is it's correct if i try to like control it that it usually don't go very well yeah mm -hmm. i just most of the time these days like it's direct this is your project you know you decide you know then i will support mm -hmm. then it's then much easier but some directors they don't really have the idea sometimes <laughs> yes, so because they, because I have like six or seven projects, each director different. Some directors they have kind of like you know already fixed the uh, very concrete ideas which directions he or she is going, and that's that's much easier for me. Like then uh, I just have to f support the director. Right? But sometimes the director says like, "Well, that's producer job, you know. I'm I'm just a director, you know. You." I think most of maybe the commercial directors sometimes you know they don't really have right like in Japanese industry like always you know we don't have original works mm -hmm. so they they have the subject already given yes then they, some director they can do the job but you know but then when they say you know yeah they say no this is your, your work you you decide you know then uh, sometimes director doesn't say anything you know some director don't say anything Maybe you or she wants to have something in idea, but it, you know, so, but then it's, it's difficult, but I always try to understand, you know, because I'm also not good at telling what I'm thinking, right? Mm -hmm. So some directors are not also, you know, good at just telling what. Yeah. Communication right? is, is everything and it's super important. Yeah. So yeah, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a communications teacher, but I still have trouble expressing myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's that's really difficult you know but uh super difficult yeah so 
you know, this channel is about uh, commercials. Like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very fond of uh, TV commercials. So, um, and the reason why, like, you know, I, I like to interview producers, feature film producers and things is I think like, in my opinion, I think doing commercials is a great path to getting into feature directing. Uh, would, would you agree with that? And have you done any commercial works or, or can you, can you speak to that? Can you say like, you know, is, is it a good path for people to kind of get practice on short films or commercials before they do features? I, I think if you want to be a commercial film director, it's, it's good to become a TV commercial director, mm -hmm. you know, because most of the time, I think in, in Japanese industry, like a, the commercial film director, like, it's coming from TV commercial as well. They don't necessarily select some, someone who can write a good script, you know, mm -hmm. um, somehow they, yes, I, I think many directors, uh, the background there from TV commercials, or like music videos, Mm -hmm. or maybe sometime TV drama. Mm -hmm. um, but these days are changing. I see some director coming from the indie film side, you know. Right. Uh, for example, the director of The, the Midnight Swan, mm -hmm. uh, Eiji Uchida-san, like he's, uh, I, I know him very well, but he's, he's also from the indie film, you know. He was making kind of micro-budget indie films for many years, then he got the Japanese Academy Award this year so it's those are the changing but i think the basically um the commercial yeah work you know helpful uh but but i think as a producer's perspective um i i don't want to work for commercials right. um because i think it for for film production, I think I think that writing screenwriting is much more important than uh, than your ability uh, on set. The ability as a... to be on right, and also the budget is kind of totally different from a commercial, you know, TV commercial and uh, you know the film. Like even though the feature film the, the budget is one million, it's <clears throat> it's still much smaller than most of the TV commercials. Of course, of course. Yeah. And see, TV commercials, what, 10 hours or 20 hours, you're on set. Yeah. And you're yeah. done. Right. So, so yeah, like, you know, the people have so many experience, but sometimes they cannot really, you know, if you go to the low budget feature film with uh, a few people on the set, you know, even if it's the budget, maybe I don't say one million, but if it's 500,000, we don't have so many people on the set, you know, because if we pay them properly, you know, then uh, easily to the budget becomes 500,000. Yes. Even with the 10 people on the set, right? Then I don't think, you know, getting those experience on the TV commercials, maybe it's better than nothing. <laughs> right? Maybe it's better than nothing. But if you have time to do so, um, I would say it's better to do Screen right, writing. screenwriting, but screenwriting, you know, you usually maybe if you if you're a young director and if you spend your one year for screenwriting, maybe you you make no money, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. So, so most of the people, it's impossible to do right. so. That's why many people they they direct the TV commercial for money, right? And yes, if you direct the TV commercials, um, you can make money, you can survive. But then you don't have time to write the script, you know, <laughs> because I think TV commercial is, it's not easy. You know, I, the one, busy. another thing I try not to do is it's another profession, you know, it's another, I, I'm not really saying it's, you know, it's, uh, it's something lower than the feature film. It's just another profession, you know, if so you want saying, to, right. So what you're saying is like, you have to kind of decide, like, uh, it's difficult to do two things at once. For me, it is difficult. Yeah, and, I cannot... and, you've, and you've tried that, right? Like in the past, like with your work, and that's why you. I was yeah, I tried a bit, but uh, you know, when I try to work with a director, and always we, even if it's a one minute TV commercial or ninety minutes feature film, you know, if we have, if we know we're going to shoot the TV commercials next month, you know, we spend lots of time, you know. 
Yes. We are always thinking about that, you know. Yes, it dominates, you, your, it dominates uh, your brain. Yeah. <clears throat> so I decided not to work for do the TV commercial because maybe for me, it's just for making money. And, uh, right. I, I guess like it's, it's kind of the same problem you had in the past, right? Where, where you were working for a company. Right. And that's took your time. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess what you're trying to say is, you know, you've decided to focus on one thing. Yeah. Producing. Yeah. Right. No, and no other part-time works or, 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 or any other professions. Right. I don't want to do that, you know. So I guess what you're saying is to be to be uh, I mean to be more successful uh, in this game, it's just best to it's best to focus on something. I think I think so, yeah. But it's just so difficult, you know, because I got almost no income for the past like you know five years. <laughs> so I tried. I kind of invented a way to survive without making money. <laughs> wow, I, I think that's very interesting. Yeah, that's what that was my focus for the past five years. I did try, you know, to make more time, not the money. You know, I thought, okay, you know, the time is more important than money. So, uh, yeah, I, I I'm still surviving, but uh, you know, I almost went to broke many times. But uh, some, <laughs> somehow we, you know, we got the government subsidy, and uh, you know, we we survived. And but <clears throat> I. Um, but I don't think we can. Like, I can really continue this for the maybe next ten years um, because my my job is more like a development. Mm -hmm. It's 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 similar to like uh, developing something, some technology, a robot, or like you know, uh, drugs. So you know those kind of it. it mm -hmm. We have to spend lots of time, but we right. never know if this is this the film will be, will be made or, you know, even though we have the government subsidies for the development fund, uh, we, I don't know how long this fund will continue. So what I'm thinking now is instead of making TV commercials, I'm trying to do start a new company for uh, distribution, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> which is more for theatrical distribution of either Japanese art house films or foreign art house films in Japan. And also, maybe I want to export Japanese films to overseas, like especially in Asia, like the market is growing, mm -hmm. and uh, not not so many people are doing that. So, yeah, I th I think you know having some kind of business structure or business organization is is the way to go, right? Especially like you're saying for something that's in demand. Yeah, yeah. So it, at least like the distribution, I think that it's part of the production for me, producer job. Yes. But before, you know, the producer, of course, I sometimes self distribute, but I mm -hmm. work with other distributors, you know, I, right. But the, the problem of Japanese film industry is uh, the producer like me, like we spend years for uh, development and making the film, mm -hmm. but you know, the theatrical distribution just normally, sometimes one week, two weeks, but in, including the promotion, maybe a few months only, right? But only for that part, many people, they give the rights to the distributor. You know, we spend maybe five years for one project, but just for a few months of work, we give the rights to the distributor. Right. And the, the problem is, uh, this is not like other business. You know? If it's other business, you know, uh, film production is like a factory, right? If you, if you make, for example, this headphone, you know, if you have a headphone factory, mm -hmm. if you sell this headphone from the, you know, if you make this headphone and uh, deliver it, you get the money, right? Right. From whatever the buyer is. Yeah, from, from but in terms of the, the film, like, you know, you, you make the film, you don't get the money, you know. Um, <clears throat> the first you know, we, we had to sell it in the theater. We had to sell the ticket in the theater. The theater is the, the, is the first place they get the money. Mm -hmm. Then the theater they always split get their money. The, the split with the distributor, right? Yes. The distributor will get money. Then if the distributor, they, if they recoup all the promotion costs and everything, then the money will come to the producer. So the producer is the first person who takes a risk in the real beginning. We take a risk. We spend many years. The, we are the one who get the profit in the end. 
you know, that's that's quite, I think, unique in the film industry. It's because it's a copyright business. You know, we are not selling things. You know, everything is it's copyright. You know. Yes. So where it comes to the distribution, the distributor always have the power. Distributor and the theater, right? And the producers, yes. even though we are the one who is taking the risk and we spend lots of time and money, uh, we don't have the power. So I thought, you know, we have to do the distribution as well. So you want to move closer to the sun, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it absolutely makes sense for sure. Um, okay, so what about like... Um, Speaking of uh, spending five years or to make a film, uh, you, you're, you're working on a project right now that you said uh, you're going to be spending 10 years on. Can you, can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that project? Yeah, the, this project is called Toki. And uh, the, the director is 29-year-old female director, Marina Tsukada. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's from Nagano, Nagano Prefecture in Japan. Mm -hmm. And this is actually based on her real-life story. Mm -hmm. from when she was in junior high school and high school and mm -hmm. also like when she become 20 something so it's a story of her 10 years of you know real life experience and i cannot really tell the story because she doesn't want to you know disclose it right but mm -hmm. this this project is like uh, we are uh, we actually want to spend 10 years to to shoot the film so what attracted you to this project why this like you know uh, you know it's 10 years <laughs> so what 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 uh what did you see that was so special in this project well i, I was thinking like i was all, always thinking how can we make a you know independent film like which um which people can remember for the next 10 years you know i was always thinking like in the past like maybe uh now i think you know the people Many, many filmmakers are talking about, for example, Edward Yan or mm -hmm. Iwai Shunji or Wong Kar Wai or those like filmmakers back in 90s, you know, mm -hmm. um, people are still watching their films, even exactly. though they, it's their, those films are kind of in, well, the budget is big, but, uh, you know, it's kind of art house films, right? But still of people course. are watching for, you know, and I think that's, unless we make that kind of film, I these days I feel like it's a bit meaningless, but it's not meaningless, but I, I'm not producing the film because I want to make a film, you know, uh, for so me, you, the, you're looking for a way to step up the interest. Yeah. Something like I want to make a good film, you know, not, uh, not for money, but we had to make money, but not just for money, you know, or, uh, so, so then like how, you know how can we make it those kind of film i was always thinking like then there's something must be crazy you know mm -hmm. maybe we, if we spent 10 years that, that's crazy right of course that, we, that, that in itself will be like yeah. will help market the film yeah and we're gonna shoot in 16 millimeter film yes yeah mm -hmm. so why, why did you choose 60 millimeter i guess it's just just to capture kind of like more real life experience style well for the for the director uh what she said is the film is raw material the dish it's unlike the digital it's films raw you know yes so the the people like us we are we are we are raw material right so like she wants to capture like for the 10 years she wants to capture this each moment of especially for those kids who are growing up for 10 years um so she thinks it's it's really suitable for this film the message to shoot in the film that's one reason mm -hmm. and another reason is that if you if we spend 10 years if we shoot in digital, you know, the technology is changing Constantly. every day, right? So maybe <clears throat> two or three years, like, you know, another camera, another technology, mm -hmm. you know, now it's 4K, but maybe 8K comes in. You're always going <clears> to <throat> have to question what, you know, yeah. what are we going to so, use? So, yeah, if you, in 10 years later, like, you know, maybe the look of the picture become different, right? Mm -hmm. So, so oh, why don't we shoot in 60 millimeter? Maybe the film is not changing, you know? But yeah, it's not it's developing. Change. Yeah, it's the same. Now, yeah, that makes minutes. a lot of sense. Yeah. So speaking of uh, 4K, <coughs> the, your previous work that you, your previous feature, uh, Erico Pretended, yeah. 
Yeah, I really like that film. I saw that in a, at the you. Asian Film Festival. Yeah. Although, actually, the Osaka Film yeah, Festival. Yeah. Also, yeah. O- Osaka Asian Film Festival, yeah. Can you, what kind of equipment did you use for that? I think you used a camcorder or something? Or? Well, it's, it's Panasonic. Um, what is the name of the... Mm-hmm. You, hired a, the... you hired a DP that owned the camera, right? No, he didn't own it, but he has a good relationship with the rental house and uh, Panasonic. So he got the camera, I think, almost for free. Mm-hmm. Um, it is 4K, 4K camera, but uh, it's not, not something not too expensive, but uh, at, the, at that time it is new. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, forgot, I just forgot the name. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's fine. Yeah. It's, fine. it's 4K camera, yeah, Panasonic. So... What was your experience on that film, and how did that film impact your, you know, your other? Did that film help step you up and get you noticed to get take on other projects? Yeah, definitely. Um, because I think if you wanna, I, I attended many like workshops in Europe, and also I went to a Busan Asian Film School, like it's producers' workshops for like six months program. Going to those those programs, you had to have some kind of you know, background, like uh, experience, right? So you have, I have at least a feature film, you know, which Eric Pretender, which is quite Japanese, you know, the right. cultural things and didn't, you know, we didn't win anything major festival or anything, but I think it was really good enough to, uh, to, sh- to prove that I can produce, you know, a feature film. So, yeah. So it's, it got you into those workshops. That's that's one thing, and uh, but also I learned a lot about you know how important it is to uh, to build a relationship with all the crew and all the people got involved because for Eric Pritten we got like more than two hundred people, you know, involved in. If you look wow. at the end credit, we have more than two hundred people. Interesting. You, usually, if we make a the budget is 40,000, 50,000, you know, you get maybe 10 people, or, you know, 20 exactly. people. Exactly. I don't say 10, but 20 or 30, right? But we got 200 people. I, I, I feel a bit guilty because many <laughs> of them, you know, worked for free, but, uh, you know, it's, the, 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 it's, we, we also got the Osaka's government subsidy, which they, they give us $6,000 only. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of government project, mm-hmm. but you know how can I make a film with six thousand USD? Exactly. Right? So you crowdfunded the rest. We we did a crowdfunding. And I also put my own money and director put uh, our money, and everyone you know understand. And we um, maybe some people are not really happy about you know with the because the payment was so low. You know we we paid main crew like maybe uh, fifty dollars a day. You know right. Or cast fifty dollars a day. How, how many days of was did you shoot? Like thirteen days, like almost two weeks. Yeah, but there were so many volunteers in. We shot in Wakayama, and so many volunteers and many companies, you know, helped us. Like we had a funeral scene. Like they, we had funeral companies. They helped us, you know. Mm-hmm. So we didn't spend anything for the funeral scenes, but what <clears throat> for those companies, I have no problem. You know, those companies they're helping for free. I think it's okay. The big company, they should help us for free. <laughs> but for the film crew, I I think I had to pay. So still, when I make another film, like when I work on with a budget, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, when I shoot on a train, you know, uh, local, you know, we, we work with local line producer, but for the train team, we had to pay, you know, $500 a day for JR, you know, I said, no, don't pay that, you know, we, you know, for that, we should ask if we can do it for free, you know, right. but we should never ask the crew to work for free, you know, exactly. If it's a rent, you know, also equipment, I think we should ask, you know, if it's the equipment mm-hmm. company, they can <clears throat> rent it us for free or something because the, the com- you know, <clears throat> those people working for the company, they get paid anyway. If it, JL, you know, the, JL, the people coming from JL, you know, exactly. they're getting paid a salary, right? Yeah, so, it doesn't affect anything. You know, doesn't they, affect they, have, anything. they have lots of money. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Also, the permissions, you know, um, <clears throat> shooting permissions. Sometimes, you know, if we yeah, pay, is that really difficult in Japan to get permission to shoot at different locations, different places here. 
Or if you try to get the permission, it's not easy, you know. But most of the time, we don't get permission. That's easier, mm -hmm. you know. Um, for my films, we we really have to get permission. We do, like when we get uh, the local subsidies, like you know, for example, if we shoot in Sapporo, we get the money from Sapporo government. Uh, some some money, right? But then we have to get permission because the money is coming from the government. But <clears throat> for other, otherwise, we usually don't have to get permission because if we ask, we some you know they get, say no. They say no, right? <laughs> so just and, so just do it and then say sorry. <laughs> yeah, if you just do it, most of the time they don't complain. Even if the police show up, they don't really say anything. they, you know, if we if we don't bother anyone, it's okay. If if we bother someone, then it will be a problem, you know. Right. If we just have to be very nice and we just have to be careful, you know, okay. for safety and uh, you know, don't bother anyone, you know. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um. All right then, Taro. Uh, I think that I think that's uh, about wraps it up. I think it's a good point to end the podcast. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time to be here. Uh, I'd love to give you the opportunity to say, like, you know, what else are you working on and you know, can, where can people find you, your work, so if you have social media accounts or anything like that? So, yeah, I'm, I'm now doing crowdfunding for this 10 years project, Toki. Mm -hmm. And so it would be great, like, if you, if you know, look at, uh, it's, it's only in Japanese, but if you look at the crowdfunding site, um, okay. yeah, the website is called Motion, Motion Gallery, mm -hmm. and uh, our project is Toki. Yeah, mm -hmm. deal. Yeah, talking. And um, yeah, just uh, if you search me or like Taro Imai on Facebook yeah, yeah. or Twitter, you know, maybe you can find me. Yeah, yeah. sure. No problem. I'll put the links uh, in yeah. the description of this video. So, you know, cool. Thanks a lot for being on the show, Taro. I really appreciate oh, it. Um, thank you for inviting me. <laughs>